Yes, yes, welcome to another video. It's, 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 it's a difficult one. <laughs> we, yeah, that was a difficult one, guys. You know what I mean? We said before the game, this was going to be really tough. Um, I think I even said that I was worried, more worried about this game than I was United. And yeah, I mean, we didn't get the points, did we? You know what I mean? We got the draw. Um, loads to talk about. So much happened in the game and so much didn't happen at the same time. Before we get into it, guys, please drop a like on the video if you enjoy it. Uh, subscribe to the channel as well if you're new. We're trying to get to 50k, so any help towards that would be appreciated. And a massive thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring the video. 85% of partners prefer a man who is groomed below the waist and 96% of partners think bad grooming is a major turnoff. That's where Manscaped have come in to help us all out, including myself, lads. The Lawnmower 4.0 is a trimmer specifically designed with our crown jewels in mind it has skin safe technology to reduce those nicks and cuts and gives you the maximum confidence while trimming below the waist it's also ipx7 waterproof rated so you can operate in wet or dry conditions it has a premium 7000 rpm motor with quiet stroke technology and a massive 90 minute battery time which is supported by its wireless electromagnetic charging function with the performance package 4.0 you'll get the crop reviver with witch hazel and powerful odor defense this keeps your balls protected after a good shave crop preserver with its soothing aloe vera and advanced quick absorbing cream keeping your balls feeling fresh and hydrated and the weed whacker to trim ear and nose hair the performance package 4.0 is everything you need to keep you the most groomed man in the room use our code extra 20 xtra20 at checkout and you'll save yourself 20 percent off your order and receive free international shipping Yes, yes. Uh, details about Manscaped are in the description. Shout them out. Um, right, okay, let's get into it then, bro. I mean, uh, the team lineup sick. Can't complain. Yeah. We predicted the team lineup. This is the exact team we wanted, bro. Um, shows you we know nothing, doesn't it? It just shows you we ain't, <laughs> sometimes we, ain't, we aren't right. Look, Most of the time. Look, let's, 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 let's cut to the chase here, yeah? What, what bloody happened here? I'll tell you what happened. We couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. We had chance after chance after chance. Didn't put the ball in the back of the net. Um, you know, I think Laporte had two chances. Bernardo had a couple of chances. Mares had a couple of chances. You know, we had the chances, guys. But at the end of the day, if you look back at a lot of the games this season where we've dropped points in, it's because we don't score. You know what I mean? If you look back, um, Tottenham, opening day of the season, um, we lost 1-0, Son on the counter-attack. But we had so many chances to score. You know what I mean? Today, chances to score... Um, Southampton, you know, I mean, we're not scoring goals against them. It, it's coming down to the fact that we are just not clinical enough in these games. Now, of course, it's one match and we can still go on and win the league. And, you know, I'm backing the boys to go and do that. But, you know, you can see, you can see why City went for Kane last year. You can see why we're going for Haaland this year. And we, and we really, really need to be getting one because, you know, even if we win the league this year, there is a serious chance that we might not win the league. And if we don't win the league, it would be because we don't have a striker. Because we can't score goals, you know, in these type of games. You know I mean, we beat Tottenham in the opening day of the season. We win today. The league's basically done, you know what I mean? But because we've not, the league is still open and it, it, and it has been blown wide open. But yeah, man, I mean, pff, difficult, difficult one today. Yeah. Today, I think... It's weird because uh, I mean we got battered off Tottenham and uh, do you know what I mean we got, well it was a disgusting they, uh, game against Tottenham when they beat us uh, the other week but this this was more painful than that because it was when well, it's not your day it's not your day and uh, we, do you know what I mean you can see the chances in that and you, do, it, you it's hard to believe that it's just not hitting the back of the net at times and it it was painful and especially when now when it's so tight um, you know I mean Liverpool right behind us now because of this game. Um, it just makes it even more disgusting the fact that yeah. the pressure from Liverpool is there and there'll be fans who say oh yeah I'm chill don't worry about it don't worry about it but but inside you know Liverpool are right behind you you know what I mean they're making you sweat mm. and they do make you crumble in it you get nervous I was crumbling the match I was nervous I was bricking it all the way through the game because that's what that's what it's like in the in the in these title races it, it, it's disgusting it ain't it ain't fun um, unless you're winning it <laughs> then it's all right yeah but, you, you but know the, the, Oh. Sorry, but the 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 glaring thing, bro, like like you just said there is, and it, I feel like it's it's a cheap shot nowadays because it's just easy to say. Yeah, you're right. But the striker thing is just 
It's so obvious. I know, it's I know, it's I know. 18 shots and we couldn't put it in the back of the net. We've got yeah. a record because against Palace, we've had the most shots without scoring a goal in two games. Madness. Yeah, you know you know what it is as well, yeah. It's like I actually thought we played alright. You know what I mean? I don't I seen some people on Twitter saying, Oh, it was a shocking performance, this, that, that you know what? I thought it was alright, you know, I thought it played decent, I thought yeah. the players looked really hungry, I thought the work rate from the players was excellent, I thought the, they moved the ball around semi-decently, you know what I mean, I thought they could have been better in areas and maybe a little bit quicker at times, but on the whole, not a bad performance, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, because <laughs> performances don't win your titles, results do, you know what I mean, and, and that's the disappointing thing about this, you know, if you look at this game today, we played well better today than we did against Everton. But everything we got the win, you know what I mean? No one really spoke about it, you know what I mean? Everyone sort of said, oh yeah, it wasn't the best performance, but we got the win today. You know what I mean? This is the, this is the thing and about the reactions and that. It's like, we played all right today, don't win. And everyone's on Twitter arguing with each other, you know what I mean? Some people have given up on the title. Some people, people screaming Pep out. Some people calling Pep, or why is he not doing this? Why is he not doing that? People calling the players and it's just like, look, at the end of the day... Today was disappointing, you know, we was all frustrated, we was all angry, you know what I mean? I was I was angry during the game and that, but at the end of the day, guys, the league is still in our hands, yeah? Before tonight, right, if we draw against if we drew against Liverpool in our next match against Liverpool, um, we would have had a free draw against any other team. We've now got that draw, we've used that draw. So basically now we need to win our draw against Liverpool and again and the league is still in our hands. Now of course Yes, the league is also in Liverpool's hands, but they have to beat us. We don't have to. We don't have to beat Liverpool. A draw is fine. You know what I mean? So, look, disappointing, of course. Um, and and we do, we do need to get a striker. And you know, uh, Haaland, We we spoke about Haaland so much over the last couple of weeks. You know, is that we're looking likely, but if he comes in this team, guys. I mean, you look at games like today, and you know, generally, I'm interested. Interested in you, what you guys think in the comments section below. Is how many goals do you reckon Haaland would have scored tonight? I reckon two, three minimum. I really do. The ball's fizzed into that area so many times and we just need someone there and, and that's been the story of our season, really. I do think if we had Haaland, we'd be a lot safer than we are now. Um, I agree with that. But yeah, something that a lot of other City fans are, are discussing online as well, bro, um, and I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, fans at the, at the stadium as well are calling for this, is the substitutions. Now, obviously, Pep Guardiola, we know he doesn't make that many subs. You know Infamous I mean? for the so subs. It's not like a shock, but I think it does frustrate people, right? And I get I get why it could be frustrating. You, know, you want your team to win. You want to see someone coming off the bench. You want to see some fresh legs. You want to see this. You want to see that, yeah? But obviously, Pep's not doing that. Now, Pep's come out after the game, and he was asked, why not making subs? And Pep's said, look, the players on the pitch are doing the business. I thought they were playing well. Um, I like the the pace of the game. I thought I like the intensity, and I thought they they had a good rhythm. So therefore, I didn't make a sub. At the end of the day, guys, is our manager if he's looking at the situation on the pitch and thinking the players that I'm going to bring on will not impact this in a positive way, then he's not going to do it. I don't want him to make subs for making subs reason. I only want him to do that for the positive and and reasons that he believes. You know what I'm saying? So. At the end of the day, the only real substitution that I would have made in that game is I would have took Bernardo Silva off and put Gundogan on. That's it. I don't think Raheem Sterling um, would have guaranteed your success. And <clears> I don't <throat> think Gabby Jesus would have. So really, there was only one sub that I saw that you could do anyway. Yeah. That's the only sub that I think I, I'd have made. Um, we're saying it quite a lot in the stream as well. Like The Bernardo situation, he didn't have a great game, Bernardo. Um so I would have put Gundogan on. I, I, I would have liked to just see that. But you know what I mean? At the end of the day, if Pep's thinking the system's flowing the way it is and he thinks that bringing on Gundogan for Bernardo might disrupt it, then, you know what I mean? I back Pep. You know what I mean? I, I, I back his decision. Um, I do... I, I, I back his decision, but I, I do. I would have liked to have seen Gundogan. I just, I, that's that's my only like thing. I would have liked to see it. But, mm. you know what I mean? end of the day, you have to trust your manager. Sometimes, I mean, the, the, he's the guy who makes the calls, isn't it? I... I I'm not qualified to be in that job. If I, do you know what I mean? Me wanting Gundogan on that pitch, do you know what I mean? It means nothing because I don't have the I don't have the credentials of Pep in it. Do you know what I mean? Pep knows be, Pep knows these players best. Do you know what I mean? Out of any of us. Yeah. So, do you know what I mean? If he wants to keep the players that are on the pitch on the pitch, I get it. I get it. Do you know what I mean? He's the one that's seeing it. He, they could have been playing exactly how Pep wanted them to play. So he's like, mm. why should I change it? This is that. This is exactly how I want us to be playing right now. This is how we train. This is what we plan for. But the issue is, 
you know, <laughs> no one's putting the ball in the back of the net. So we're playing right. It's just the, when it's come down to the final bit, the final bit, we just putting the ball in the back of the net. It just weren't happening for us. Yeah. It was I, not our day. And I, yeah, and you're right, bro. At the end of the day, yeah, all right, you might want subs, and I get it. I, I know, I know, some people wanted the subs, but at the end of the day, it wasn't like we was playing bad. We created the chances. You know what I mean? And Pep might have made the Pep might have made a sub, and then the chances might have dried up. And that's probably yeah. what he was thinking. He was probably sat there. He was probably stood there on the side of the pitch, going. We're playing good. We're creating chances. I just need you to score the bloody goal. You know what I mean? If I bring Sterling on, I bring Gundogan on, I bring Gabriel Jesus on, it might alter the, the yeah, flow of the game. it changes it, doesn't it? We might stop creating chances. And then, then everyone will like, well, you was actually playing all right. And then you made a sub and then we went, crap. Like So, look, people are always going to talk about it because I think it's one of them things that people just think, oh, make a sub and we win the game. I don't think it's that simple. You know what I mean? I, I think there's more to it than that. I understand sometimes people getting frustrated. However, I do think that... At the end of the day, the only place that you can really place blame on the pl is on the players not putting the ball in the back of the net and maybe just a little bit of luck. Maybe we didn't have that luck today. Um, right, let's go into the player ratings, guys. These are decided by our extra club members, people at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you want to get involved, influence the ratings, have your say. You can do link is in the description. And by the way, uh, we'll be doing a tier three live watch along of the United game versus Madrid um, tonight or tomorrow, whenever you're watching this. Uh, right, let's get into it, bro. Edison. Um, had a couple of saves to make however luckily for us a lot of the saves he had to make were pretty easy and he gets a pretty standard score Walker with a 6 I thought Walker had a bit of a weird game bro like he was slow I think he played yeah I don't mean slow in speed I mean decision making slow he, he, he got the ball and he just needs to pop it off rapid to Rodri in the middle of the pitch it's taking a little bit too long you know what I mean he got, he got caught out once when he just took too long the guy tackled him and, and we got lucky on it but yeah just a little bit slow. John Stones, man of the match today. I thought he had a brilliant game. I really do. Obviously, still a few iffy moments, but I think on the whole, the whole defence was a little bit shaky. But I thought today, I agree with our extra club members there. I thought he was our man of the match. Thought defended really, really well. Made yeah. a couple of vital blocks. You know, he's got a worldie. Yeah, he was the one out of him and Laporte who was getting on the ball, trying to make things happen. He was the stronger centre-back, definitely. It, it, was, it was very clear that Stones was your main centre-back in that game. Mm, yeah, and Laporte, obviously, that's that's reflected. Laporte with a 6.2. Uh, Cancelo with a 5.6. Wasn't Cancelo's day, you know, like the rest of the players. A lot of his crosses were overhit. Tamara's at the back post. Um, obviously, did it, that, that, that rocket, which unfortunately for us hit the post. Um, but yeah, not not the best performance, bro. Yeah, uh, Rodri the four point four. What's going on, bro? Oh, What's going on, Rodri? Is are we seeing like so, you know sometimes yeah where maybe results aren't going quite your way? Sometimes you see things that are not actually happening. So you might go, Rodri's not in the best of form, right? It, are we imagining this, or is he actually not in good form? Because I think he's I think he's out of form, but I, I don't think he's dominating I, I no, the ball, I, dominating the rhythm like he was in the early part of the season. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And um, he, he's there's a a bit of sloppiness. Do you know what I mean, creeping into his game at the moment. Do you know what I mean, a few stray passes and uh, stuff. And I think with Rodri's position, because he's now being trusted as a lone CDM, like we don't run the the, the double pivot thing with two CDMs anymore. Because um, he's like our, our sole CDM situation. I feel like when he makes a mistake, it's very, very like. Do you know what I mean the the light is on it? Do you know what I mean yeah. it's very clear. Whereas if there's if the players like do the wingers and stuff like that, if they lose the ball or something like that, there's a lot of time for the. Do you know what I mean Palace have a long way to go to get to our goal. There's a lot of things to happen for them to get to our goal. Whereas with Rodri, he's in such a key position where if he loses the ball, they can count you straight away. So it's it's, it's that's why it's necessary for Rodri to to kind of like keep the mistakes like the sloppy passes to a minimum uh, I do agree he's not in the best form right now and that's reflected with his his, his rating there 4.4 we 4. really 4. need him to improve bro, like, because yeah, he's going to be crucial in the Champions yeah, League yeah he is, he is. and the, uh, the fix isn't <laughs> his rest because he's definitely had enough rest um, or is the fix an extended you know Fernandinho you know what I mean like as old as he is he's experienced he knows the game he's experienced in these maybe we need to put a bit of experience in there put him in Maybe put Fernandinho in, put Gundogan in, you know, put these players in who've been there, done it time and time again. These these type of players may have to to, to enter the games. You know, like as you get to the business, like this end of the season, isn't it? Do you know what I mean, mean nine games to go. Are you playing? It's an option, yeah. Form? Are you playing? Yeah, are you say like? Or you give him a rest? We, we, we've done know. this. We've done similar things with Kevin De Bruyne. We've had similar conversations with Kevin De Bruyne when he's been out of form. You don't know really what to do, whether to take him out or to to keep playing him into form, kind of thing. It's just. So to Pep in it, how he sees it. Um, De Bruyne, as I say, he gets 6.8. Uh, 
uh, and Bernardo with the the lowest rating I've ever seen Bernardo get uh, with a two point six. Uh, it wasn't Bernardo's game today at all. No, I mean at the end of the day, that's probably just reflecting the chances that he had. You know, he yeah. had a couple of chances. The one, the, the, he had, he had a re- the one where Grealish yeah, squared it across the box. It, yeah. He just needs, yeah. it. like, say, it weren't our day. Weren't our day. It wasn't Bernardo's day, but look, I'm sure Bernardo will come back firing. Riyad Mahrez gets a 5.9. He had a couple of chances that I think, you know, on another day he'll probably bag. Grealish with a 6.9. Don't really know what, what he did, you know what I mean? I thought. I, yeah. actually, I actually like Grealish today. I, think, I, I do feel like I've seen people in the chat um, saying that he was robbed of his assists. And I do kind of I get that because we weren't putting the back on the net. Yeah, that, I mean? that, that, that's fair. That's fair. Um, and, but that's what happens when you don't score goals. That's what happens when you don't score goals. Your wingers. Yeah get low low scores because your team's not scoring the goals. <laughs> yeah. Foden, 5.4. 4, maybe we need to talk about Phil Foden in the false nine position against teams that play this ultra low block. You know what I mean? Does it work? I don't know. Um, Pep with a 5 and the referee with a 2.4. Um, I actually don't remember the referee doing too many bad things. Uh, maybe a I don't know. Maybe I'm just no, no. I think that, I mean just a standard referee game sometimes. I mean he gets 2.4 for, for the actual members. I don't know. Maybe they seen something we didn't, bro. Yeah. I, I don't really remember anything that was where I was screaming about the ref or anything. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, look, guys, not our day. You know what I mean? Sometimes that happens, but ultimately we have to move on. You know, that's what you have to do. You have to get this out of your system. We've got yeah. a hard game coming up at the weekend in the FA Cup now against Southampton. We've not beat them this season. That's going to be tricky. That's going to be disgusting. Uh, then we've got Burnley away. That's going to be tricky. You know what I mean? Then we got Liverpool. We've got Champions League as well. You know what I mean? It's, it's coming thick and fast. These games are not easy, but at the end of the day, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, innit, bro? That, that's, the, that's the saying. <laughs> Um, we'll leave it there guys please go and check out Manscaped if you've got a hairy ball sack go check out their, their stuff use code EXTRA20 at checkout for 20% off and free shipping uh, smash a like on the video if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel as well if you're new we'll see you in the next one see you in a bit <laughs>